Thank you so much and let us now begin with the next session where we're going to learn some marketing lessons. I would like to invite our next speaker who is skilled in marketing management, customer insight, fast moving consumer goods, operations management and analytical skills. Please put your hands together for the Chief Marketing Officer, FBB Future Retail, Prachi Mohapatra. Let's hear it for her. Welcome ma'am. Hi guys, good afternoon, good evening in fact. I hope you had your tea, coffees. No, none of you got served, right? Okay, um, well I heard uh, her speaking about me and of course the session, marketing lessons, it set me thinking who was this lessons for in fact. In fact, um, when we launched these marketing plans, it was one of the biggest lessons for us as well when we started working on these plans as a brand altogether. So I'm going to share a few, uh, few of our marketing plans which worked for us. Some of them definitely did not work for us, work for us. but a few of us, uh, few of them really worked well for us. So while we're talking about uh, them, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about what we do generally. We sell apparels, all of you all know that. We sell apparels through more than 370 doors in more than 120 cities, across 120 cities. So the distribution structure is absolutely one of the strongest that, uh, that we have. Uh, when, I, when I look at uh, just this one, Sara. So when I look at the um, strength that we have in the market, in fact, one of our primary strengths that we speak about is what we do that nobody else does. Of course, the distribution is strong. Uh, of course, the voice is there. What is it that we believe in when we say that we are one of the strongest apparel retailers in the, city, in the country is primarily the proximity to customers, not only in distribution, but only also in the voice that we find in the, in the market. Well, this slide talks a lot about what a typical marketer will present you, but what we generally try to uh, do and believe is one of our primary strengths is to stay active. When I say active, it's not about the number of campaigns that we make uh, or produce or put out. It's primarily one of the voices that we say that um, it's staying active when we touch base with our customer. It's staying active by making mistakes as well. It is, it is because as a group we believe that not doing something is far more expensive than absolutely staying silent. So it is better that we do something and stay active rather than staying absolutely silent. So that's one of our primary strengths. So in, the, in these lines, I, I would like to share a few of our marketing plans which really has worked upon us. Um, how many Mallus in the house, if I may ask? Malayalis in the house? Is there any? Fantastic. I'm looking out, watching out for you because the next slide is absolutely for you. Um, so we talk about a lot of marketing pillars that we have worked on. I heard a lot of us. So um, one of our uh, primary pillars that we base on is, we he I heard a lot of us speaking about localization. In fact, what we have started believing is hyperlocalization. In fact, that's, the, that's, that's precisely why I wanted the Malu in the house to have a look at the next slide primarily. When I say uh, hyperlocalization, I wanted her to define this slide for me. Uh, if, ma'am, you could. Can, can we have a mic for her or something like that? Sorry guys to put you in such a situation. Uh, 
you will have to say your name first. Malika. Hi, Malika. Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it says shirts for every Chetan, Aliyan, and uh, I can't read the last. Uh, Machan. Uh, okay. Shirts for Machan. every Chetan, Aliyan, and Machan. Okay. So uh, explain it to us. Like, I'm sure others didn't understand at all what you <laughs> said, just spoke. Okay, uh, so Chetan uh, typically is an elder brother. So that's what we, uh, you mean by Chetan. Alien is uh, a brother-in-law and uh, or a f even a friend, it's used as a slang. And uh, again, down south, there is this um, slang that you use, which is very say macha for a friend. So it's, you know, for every uh, person in your... Absolutely. Thank you so much, Malika, for being Thank such you. a big help. So what we started looking at is when we started talking hyper-localization, we started speaking and looking at markets like a Kerala market. So a Kerala market is predominantly uh, a space wherein most of the men, approximately 65 to 70 percent of the men would only have shirts in their cupboard as they wear something in their, as, as upper wear, which we say. So 65% to 70% of men only having shirts, shirts with a pair with a denim, shirts with a pair with the chinos, uh, shorts, even a mundu. So that's the kind of, kind of love that, that the market has with shirts. So when we started looking at this market, we realized how underpenetrated uh, we are as a brand in that market, a market which is absolutely looked from a national brand's perspective as well as a local brand's perspective. None of, the, none of us actually enjoy any kind of dominant market share in that market. All of us are there with a foothold and we were definitely one of not the stronger ones. So when we started looking at this market, we started looking at uh, a product which is down the, absolutely right in front of us as a low-hanging fruit. And we wanted to create something which, as Malika explained, which is a language that they use. So a Chetan, a Alian, and a Machan is used as a bro for them at every age group. So a Chetan, somebody who's in their 20s, a Chetan, um, Alian, somebody who's in their 30s, 40s, and then a Machan, which is, again, a slang which you use. And surprisingly, this is a very... Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a term which is used by youngsters as well. So we started working around this campaign and, you know, the numbers actually had a spellbound which I will want to play after this video in case it plays. We have been quite surprised by the... No. What very regular video for anyone who's watching this in this room, but somebody who's sitting out in Kerala can actually see that this has been shot in a Jew town, this has been shot in backwaters, this has been shot in beaches, this has been shot at, a, at with every nuances that a Kerala market actually looks out for. So if and it was it was not the only space that we uh, worked out on and localizing it. Um, we have more than six stores in all across Kerala. Uh, there, were, there are primarily three stores in Cochin who we wanted to reach out to. So our voice actually has been very strong from a catchment perspective. So we went all the way out and absolutely worked around on a catchment specific market. More than localizing it, 
That's why we say hyper-localizing it. So the numbers are here for us to see. And uh, while um, we have been growing at a certain pace all across in the national average, this number beats the national average by at least 10 to 12 percent. So this is this is the kind of uh, uh, kind of figures that we experienced when we went hyper local with a product which is right there as a low hanging fruit but we just pick up something which is as simple as speaking their language speaking the language that the youngsters work with and the numbers for us uh, in fact the objective was very clear that we didn't want to work only on the shirt as a category as a product but it had a fantastic cascading effect on the entire sale of Kerala as a whole so moving ahead um, on hype, after hyperlocalization, uh, we went ahead and spoke about something uh, for from the next part, other part of the country, which is the eastern zone, wherein um, this campaign, the other, the next campaign, served one of the finest voices for us from a brand building perspective. So, on the hyperlocalization, the objective was very clear to speak their language, also have a fantastic business objective on numbers. On the second campaign that I'm going to share with you as one of our marketing lessons was uh, a campaign which was done in the eastern part of the country in West Bengal, uh, in Kolkata. And the objective was very clear to be a, a clutter-breaking voice in the Pojo market. Um, how many bongs in the house now? Okay. Uh, I'm sure if you have seen Calcutta during Pujo, all form of branding just defeats itself. Like, I, I experienced this firsthand last year, and I couldn't believe the quantum of branding every brand puts out over there. So it seemed to be believed to... There is not even an inch of space in Kolkata, especially, wherein you will find any space that, that a marketer would have left to do any kind of branding. And in such a cluttered market, to have a voice which is sounding very different, catches attention, and also gets spoken about uh, is is something which is which is next to impossible for a marketer what we did uh, in this market was we took a heritage property like the tram which is seen only in this part of the country which is kolkata and we branded it as the abb glam tram the objective was very simple it was it was not one of the uh, marketing plans that we had launched to clearly have any kind of uh, business out of this glam tram. So what is this glam tram? In fact, that we converted this tram as a moving shop for us. So it's right there uh, on the streets of Kolkata. So there's, you can get in, get off it, and shop around. But the primary uh, objective for us was very clear to have as much engagement on this kind of uh, on this project as possible so for us um, if, if we could just see a nice small video on this <laughs> So, you know, what it created for us was something which was very astounding. The quantum of user-generated content that we experienced during this time was something which we had not experienced with most of our campaigns, in fact. Uh, if, you, if you could see this, this uh, kind of uh, response that we had online to offline redemption of coupons also, it was massive. Something that we had not, uh, we had, the, the objective was to have a voice, but this kind of return on the investment that we had made was something which we experienced for the first time. And then again, it was something which 
um, which we had envisaged to create a, create a brand building, but it actually ended up giving a lot of our business revenues as well. Um, the third uh, campaign that I would like to share is something that um, we hold very close to our heart. Um, how many of you can name a few uh, nightwear brands for me? Anyone? None? Anybody can scream it loud. Yeah, there is last, there is a lady who is waving her hand. You can scream it out loud. I won't mind if it's not my brand. Jockey, yeah. Victoria's Secrets. Victor Sorry, Victoria's Secrets. Yeah. Okay. Marks and Spencer, yeah. Sorry? Uh, you know, I, okay. Quite a few names, in fact. I, I must say, I must congratulate you guys that you guys know more than I expected you to. Well, um, well this is a market um, which is approximately a 15,000 crore market and largely dominated, approximately 90% to 95% of this market is absolutely dominated by unorganized sector. It is a place where is none of the brands had ever taken a space, never, in fact, never have taken a stance, active stance to speak about a nightwear as a brand since the past one year. In fact, when we started going around and started thought that we should speak about our brand, Shaila, it was for the first time ever that we actually thought that some, one of the brands has taken an active space and spoken about this brand. Now, why this uh, project was very close to our heart, primarily again, um, this was speaking about a category which had never been spoken about. This was speaking about a, a, about a product which is generally uh, shopped around in an or, unorganized sector, or most of us actually find it uh, simpler to order it online. Um, not a space wherein you will get all of all uh, your product that you like, so be it uh, shorts or be it a uh, mid-length dress or an uh, ankle length nighty or a nightgown that most of the Indian women prefer to wear. You will not be able to find everything in one space and we had it. So um, we decided that we will speak about this brand and actively so on all our platforms. So this was one campaign which will, we went 360 degree all out as a campaign. Can we have the video please once? Mere workout wale mornings pretty. Mere hard working hangouts bhi. Mere carefree wala attitude. Mere carefully done prints bhi. Mere late mornings lazy. So, if you see the video also, it, it clearly states the, the number of products that we had. We did nothing except showcasing our entire range of product that we had. And we just simply did it by putting it all out there at a starting price. Because with nightwear or sleepwear, most of us don't want to invest a lot in nightwear and sleepwear. We want something which is extremely comfortable. And to put uh, things in perspective, when we started thinking that we should be doing this, we actually did some research and found that most of us, people in this room also, spend approximately 12 hours a day, and in fact housewives even more, in their nightwear. Because the moment you get back home, you immediately change into something which you actually end up sleeping in the night as well. So most of us do that, but we never pay attention or actually never have any of our brand has actually spoken and taken a stand saying that, okay, this is what all you need and everything is in under one roof. So we were the first ones to take it. And you know, the we expected, definitely expected a sale um, jump on it. And uh, we, we definitely were very sure that, okay, we are, we were the first brands, we're definitely going all out and taking a space wherein we'll speaking it uh, about it uh, loud and clear. But we were surprised by an 8x growth, which was one of the mammoth jump that this brand ever saw. From, uh, at this point of time, it's standing close to a 500 crore brand in our portfolio. So that was a massive jump. And when we spoke about this brand, 
we went and actually engaged uh, with all age group. If you if you if you're looking at something uh, from a from uh, from a members first or from a loyalty perspective, we will. We put this brand uh, with this put this campaign out there, because this was one campaign wherein we wanted to engage on a personalized level. So if you have shopped with us in the past three months for any sleepwear as a woman, as a sleepwear, in nightwear, or any Western casuals, or even a kurti, you received a personalized message from um, uh, us. So dear Malika, so and so, we have a fantastic new range of sleepwear available with us from this, 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 and here you go. This is the kind of collection we have. Please come and shop with us, and here's your M coupon. The quantum of redemption we saw on that M coupon from our members or loyalty customer was mammoth. We take pride in saying that we nurture our members and our loyalty customers. The campaign that we had on digital, which went live, uh, with a lot of converse, generated a lot of conversations for us and a lot of engagement for us. And the quantum of sale that we had received from this is for us to see. So at we, this point, one of our primary marketing lessons from last year is we are nurturing one of the biggest sleepwear brands with us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking to all of you. If there is any questions, I'm happy to take it. None? Absolutely crystal clear. Ladies and